Hey, hello, hi, welcome to and you're back to the Equa Theory Podcast. I am your host, Jill Treese, and this week's episode we are having a special guest on, and she is an animal communicator. I know, I know. This is usually a very sciencey educational podcast, but I thought it would be cool to sort of wrap up the year doing something kind of out there, you know, investing in the 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 woo woo side okay so just let me have this one okay (laughs) and uh so the first half of the episode we're going to be just talking to the animal communicator about animal communication and then towards the end of the episode we're going to be interviewing quotations zoe lex azula and a special guest at the end so i hope that you guys are curious and find it interesting because i thought it was Really cool. So thank you guys so much for listening. And this will be our second to last episode of 2020. So thank you guys for all being there. And I hope that this episode feels kind of like a, a good special episode. I don't know. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into this bad boy. Naturally, of course, before we get into the content of the episode, I've got to tell you guys about a few cool things that you can check out if you would like to support the podcast, as I currently have pretty infrequent and (laughs) non-interest-accruing ads on the podcast. So feel free if you would like to check out our merch. You can find it at jetequithery.com slash shop, I believe, Um, or you could just go to my website and then click shop, and then you can see all the things. Um... I am working on a podcast website, so that will be there soon, but don't, don't, don't look for it. (laughs) Um, And then if you want, you can also join our Patreon, and that way you can support me and the horses, as well as get your questions answered through a myriad of ways, phone call, on the podcast, um, having me read and respond to your question on the podcast, and sorry, my cats are running as per usual. Um, (laughs) but we also have live Zoom Q&A meetings, and there is access to a like-minded community via a Discord server, so, you know, there's lots of things and lots of benefits and perks that I try to make the, um, the Patreon worth it to you, so hopefully that is something that you'll consider, and that is going to be my ads for today. Let's get into the episode. Alrighty, everyone, I have Miss Shelly Buchanan on the line, and so I'm going to let her tell us a little bit about herself and plug some things, let you guys know where you can find her, and then I'm going to ask her some questions about animal communication, because don't we all want to know? (laughs) I'm dying to know the answers to these questions, and (laughs) I found a lot of them asking my patrons on the Discord server, so... Um, after we get through the questions, then we're gonna speak with some ponies. So I'm excited. Shelly, take it away. Hello, everybody. And thank you, Jill, for having me. It's it's a pleasure and an honor. And we're gonna have some fun, too. (laughs) I'm excited. I'm so stoked. My name is Shelly Buchanan. I've been an animal communicator for, I I don't really know the exact years, but I can say a long time. (laughs) And not only have I been an animal communicator, I also have had many privileges in the horse world with um, going to massage therapy school for the equine as well as chiropractic school for the equine when it was a possibility. Nice. But now being in a chiropractor is um, a little tricky. My understanding (laughs) is for veterinarians and um, licensed human chiropractors only if which you is great the rules. you know i still can <laughs> give some of that with it but over the years um i traveled and did work with horses prca world barrel horses rope horses all types of horses backyard horses just had many privileges in that world nice so um i'm very blessed yeah mm-hmm. no it's we've we've talked separately so i i know a little bit more than the the listeners and i am just like blown away by some of the things that you've done <laughs> so yeah i think this is just going to be an awesome episode and i'm thrilled to have you on i've wanted to do this for quite a while so i'm glad to be getting into it but also like scared to death i don't want my horses to, <laughs> to say anything bad oh, they'll tell us everything we need to know oh i'm so scared on time and i am so glad that i have control over it <laughs> so <laughs> 
they say anything bad, I can just nip it out. No. Yeah. Um, but anyway, let's get into these questions. What do you say? Okay. Okay, so first of all, the most obvious question is how on earth did you know that you were an animal communicator? Like, what was the first time you were like, I think I have, have a gift here. What's going on? Well, I actually, to be honest, did not know I had the gift. Okay. I had to have some other people tell me I had the gift back in 1994. Nice. I um, had the opportunity to attend a um, clinic with Linda Tellington Jones. I don't know if you all yes. are familiar with her. Yeah. My life had was time for it to come alive. So at that workshop, we did some meditations and work. And uh, as we were sitting in a circle one day, these... Um, these wolves came in what? on this lady's ranch. I didn't pay any attention to it. And the next day, the lady had said, you know, you must be a communicator. And I go, what? why do you say that? And she said, well, these wolves have never came in this far. <laughs> so the very next day while we were at that ranch, the wolf, one of them actually came up to my chair and put his nose in my hand, I... turned away and walked away. So from that day on, what? I kind of knew that something was going on. <laughs> Yeah, I think that is kind of a, you have to have been there to, to like, really yeah. feel the the power yeah. of that and also believe it because, wow, that's crazy and I would have had a heart attack. <laughs> well, it, it was, you know, I, I was, there was no fear ever. I've never had any fear with any of it, um, not even working with any of the animals. It's just amazing. But I also want to share with the listeners that I come from a long line of healers. Yeah. Go my grandmother it. and my grandfather on both sides of my parents. So um, yeah. I think it's just something also that was genetically, I say genetically given to me. So we'll see. Yeah. I mean, it to me, it seems like with talking with you um, that you kind of have that level energy about you. And it mm -hmm. makes perfect sense that sort of the first instance that you would have picked up on something like that would be when you're meditating and just kind of being with nature and you know seeing what nature has to offer and there it was so that's just that's a crazy story um it was a fun time it was a fun time and quite a learning experience that's for sure yeah i would have been confused out of my mind <laughs> <laughs> um well i do think being from a family that had that kind of awareness it was easier for me to understand and it sounds like you know you had um more reverence for animals than I think most people do. You know, in today's society, we kind of have this perspective of animals like, oh, they're companions, they're our friends, or, um, you know, they're our partners in competition, but not really like a, a respected, there's really no other word than reverence and just like in awe of them. Um, and it sounds like you have more of that than the average person. <laughs> Well, thank you. I, I like to think I do. Um, once you come to know them and you can walk in their field, their energy field, it's a pretty phenomenal feeling. Yeah, I bet it is. Mm -hmm. um, it is. So, you know, that leads to, is this something that you're born with? Or is it something that everybody can do? Or are there, is it like a sliding scale of ability? You know, everyone has the ability, Jill. Everyone is given the same ability as I have. I just happen to be the one that chose to hone my skill. Mm. Once I made that decision with the universe, the energy, God, whatever anyone chooses to call it, mm -hmm. um, then all of the right people came to teach me. All the right schools came to teach me. Wow. I've been learning a lot more about manifesting and things like that. And it seems like mm -hmm. when you open yourself, then the things start happening. <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of hard to articulate it, I guess. But um, Like pushing against a wall. You're not going to get very far. But when you step back and relax, yeah. you're going to go a lot further. Yeah. So how did you learn to harness those skills? Like you said, you, you had the right schools of people coming but did you have a particular mentor or how did you go about tapping into it you had this incredible experience with the wolf and then you're like okay maybe this is something that I have to acknowledge where do you go from there well um we'll back up and 
before the Tellington Jones workshop, I was actually a hairstylist. I owned a hair salon. Oh. And I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Understand, when I went to school back, I always tell everybody zero time, that um, the medical profession was still governing my profession in the hairstyling world. What? Because Yes, I some of the that. first, all the, the first doctors were barbers. I had no idea. That's crazy. Yes, and I went to barber college first, and that's where we were still being governed by the medical profession in the state of Kansas, where I lived at the time. And so we had to learn the complete anatomy. I mean, everything, along with several types of diseases. So my education actually started with the muscles and the whole anatomy there interesting i had no idea i thought it was yeah. just like these are the colors you use this is how to yeah. operate our scissors <laughs> it's kind of fun because when people really learn that the barbers were the first doctors it's kind of amazing because they were really the only ones with the sharpest tools and that's when yeah. bloodletting was the thing back then in the 1800s that's nuts i feel like you're an, you're an old soul <laughs> Yeah, so harnessing your skills. What, what, what happened was my um, I was flabbing in the beauty shop one day because I had barrel horses, okay? Mm -hmm. And I had had a barrel horse that I took to many different doctors, many different veterinarians, and no one could find out what was wrong with him. Well, he had a scar down the semimembranosus muscle, which would be like your glute muscle, okay? Okay. When he would go in to take the first turn on, on the first barrel, it would almost like he would kind of, his leg would just drop a little bit out from under him, and you could feel that, mm. okay? Scary. So I was blabbing about how I wish I could find somebody that could help me with this horse, because he was really a marvelous horse. Mm -hmm. And this lady goes, I've got somebody that can help you. And so I got his number and called him, and he showed up, and he did all this work, and one day he looked at me and he said, uh, you know, you're supposed to be doing this. And I go, what are you talking about? I own a hair salon. <laughs> he said, no, you're supposed to be working with the animals. What? Yeah, I was in my 40s at the time mm -hmm, when I started. Huh. And so a few weeks later, I went to visit Linda Tellington Jones and sold my hair salon. Yep. And I've never looked back. That is nuts i i feel i feel a little <laughs> it was, camaraderie. it's been wonderful i'm telling you yeah i feel and a little camaraderie with you there. had some teachings with them yeah. that's been the fun part um yeah it seems like the when you get chosen by the the animal world you can't really <laughs> decline it um you and i talked about it before off air that i i feel a similar way that i keep trying to deviate and i get pulled back in every single time <laughs> yes you do exactly because i have even over the years tried to deviate and do something else and the next thing i know here you are you know, yeah. <laughs> on a podcast talking about animal <laughs> communication well i've always been in it not quite as much the last few years as i was when, uh, when i first started i traveled four states they did animal communication and massage therapy and back then chiropractic at the time. Yeah. I could do it. And um, so I did that for several years. That is it's crazy. But so many, like, really important fields to be in with the horses. I feel like um, Eastern medicine is a really, really big part of what keeps athletes healthy. I'm a huge advocate for chiropractic and... Um, muscle work and stuff because there's only so much you can do with needles and injections you know i agree and you know they are an athlete these horses are athletes and mm -hmm. we have to you know and their physical body is not much different than a human yeah. i had to laugh because i attended a workshop last weekend and i was having lunch with chiropractors and one of them said you know i just took a class that i didn't realize the horse anatomy was just like a human and i said oh yeah very, very much so. Yeah. The brain is different. They don't have a gallbladder, nor do they have a clavicle bone, but not much different. Yeah. About the communication, is this something that you can do consciously, or is it an involuntary thing? Like, can you turn it off? I've learned how to turn it off over the years. Yes, yes. I have a technique that I use, and I teach it on how oh, to cool. do it. Um, normally, if someone will call, I'll ask for just a moment and I'll get into the technique that I use and there we are. 
Nice. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta teach yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> people will ask me, so you go in the grocery store and somebody's got, I said, no, no, it didn't work like that. <laughs> yeah. I can't, you know, I can't read people's minds and, and I can't, you know, read their animals' minds and yeah. because um, I was ta- I've been taught, you know, how to do it and even taught a technique that I know works for people that's very simple, so. Yeah, I imagine it would get very noisy if you couldn't turn it off. <laughs> Well, would it ever? Yes. <laughs> and the thing also, when we're talking kind of on that matter, mm-hmm. people will call me maybe with another call, say a few months later, and they, they'll go, well, do you remember? And they'll say, well, you talked about this or we talked about that. And I tell them, you know, when the call is over, I, I'm done. I stepped out of everything. Mm. Yeah. I don't remember what we talked about. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not a bad thing. Yeah. Well, it, it's it's a good thing because if I kept all of that in my brain, I just thought I had a monkey mind. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding. So, it would really be a monkey mind. But and and two, I like the fact that it's a very private world. Yeah, yeah, and that mm-hmm. way you don't have to like keep up with a bunch of different people's stories and everything, and it's yeah. fresh every time. Um, yeah. So, do you have animals yourself, and do you feel like your ability to communicate can make that relationship even stronger? Or deeper in a way. Did have I've always had until this last year. Oh well, bad and, timing. Um, <laughs> some changes have taken place in my life that um, I don't have. Well, I have I have grand dogs and I have horses in my backyard, but they're not mine. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So it, it did help. Um, I had a rescue last year. His name was Baylor. He was a dog. Absolutely marvelous young man. Aww. But because he was weaned, so he was never weaned. Oh. He never he never got the pheromones that he needed from his mother in order that he didn't have separation anxiety. Interesting. So, unfortunately, he never wanted to leave me. Oh. And with the work that I have and did, I tried to take him with me on several calls, and it just didn't work out. So he um, found a family that had all the time in the world to spend with him because that's what he needed till he got older. Well, that sounds like a, a good call, you know? I mean, especially with your communication ability, I'm sure it made that transition a little bit easier. Than... It was much easier because he uh, he was okay with it. He understood it, you know, and I, and I explained to him because we would go to farms or something and he absolutely wanted to be right next to me. And it's normally what happens and people don't realize this. I'm going to share some information so Mm -hmm. your listeners will, when rescuing a dog or a horse even, I think it's probably the greatest thing in the world that these lives are being saved. But what people don't understand is if they've been weaned before the mother has made that choice or it's the time to wean the babies, they have separation anxieties. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Just every time I talk to you, I feel like there's some weird universe thing going on i just did a course over separation anxiety from fair horsemanship um her name's elise and i did her her course over it and just talked about it in the episode that went up today for everyone listening it'll be last week's episode and um then we took um our nurse mare for one of our cults we took her back to her people today Uh um so and our cult Astro, he weaned beautifully, and now my cat is scratching on the scratching board, <laughs> but um, I knew they were going to be noisy the whole time, but um, yeah, we did progressive fence line weaning, and um, you know, he he looked over the fence at her once and whinnied, and then he went right back to eating alfalfa. It was like he said, bye mom, and he hasn't, he hasn't called, he hasn't been running or anything, he's just happily in his little herd with Azula just hanging out that's awesome yeah so I definitely am an advocate for that as well um so so but I have lots of animals if you think about it yeah I bet you do (laughs) (laughs) yeah and I do go to some farms you know Mm -hmm. um not not as much as I used to but Mm -hmm. I still go to some farms so I still get my hands on animals and dogs and horses and yeah i've got some questions coming up about the differences between doing it in person and um 
over the phone as well, because I feel like a lot of people are probably like, how on earth is that going to work? Um, but I want to get through these first couple of questions. So do you, do you feel an obligation to help animals now since you, you have this ability to communicate with them? Do you feel like, you know, when you see an animal that's not in a great situation to like stop and talk to them? I have on several occasions, yes, done that. Um, an obligation. It's not a great word. (laughs) No, I know, but I'm trying to think. Not so much an obligation. I tend to, my my weakness, the empathy that I have for these animals sometimes is tough because I worked in a world for many years with lots of horses that was a very competitive world. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I would look at them and, uh, well, matter of fact, when I first started working and I worked with this horse dentist, We would leave and I'd be crying and he'd go, don't cry. You don't need to cry. I go, but you saw what they done, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, he would tell and he would explain to me, remember, that time that you gave them, you moved their life forward. You gave them the peace that they needed. So, you know, I had to use that rather than thinking of obligation. I always wanted to tell people, I think I'm a messenger more for all these animals yeah it's almost like transition therapy you know you're kind of just like there to give them Mm -hmm. a a voice for a moment at least yes yes and that's when i um that's when everything became okay because at the very beginning i was just you know i just couldn't imagine i couldn't separate myself from the behaviors that some of us humans do you know, versus I knowing where the animal really was. Yeah, I can imagine it would be rough because so many people, and we talk about it a lot on this podcast, that people are like, oh, he's just a jerk or he's just dominant or he loves his job, even though I have to inject his hawks four times a year. And he, he loves jumping, so I, that's why I do it. You know, things like that. And you just have to wonder, I wonder what would what the animal would actually say if given a voice. And I'm actually probably about to find out the very answer to that question and it's terrifying they tell um, us yeah so i can i i just i keep saying i can imagine because <laughs> i don't have anything else to say okay. um, yeah. but yeah so i guess that's an obvious con to being able to hear the animals but do they does it have any other cons because most people i think would be willing to trade not listening to them to being able to listen to them so is there anything that most people don't think about that's a potential issue? Wow, that's <laughs> kind of a loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't There's have a lot of things that people don't think about with them. Um, as for me, I've always just know that I'm there to help them. Yeah. Give them their voice. But um, there's a lot of a lot of things that people don't see that I see. But I've trained myself for the years to that's my job that's my passion I should say not a job it's definitely not a job (laughs) yeah I'm I'm with you on that one because ever since I started opening my eyes to what um you know what actual behaviors mean not just the label that I attach to them by watching the horses with an open mind reading different people's opinions Mm -hmm. over the behaviors and then being able to look at the horses and be like I think I might have been wrong for the past decade about what that meant. <laughs> I understand that. You know, and the con, um, the only, you know, I, I just never thought about having a con, you know, the cons about it because um, I've always just felt honored. Yeah. Just honored that I was brought to a, such a wonderful world to be able to walk in this world. Yeah, no kidding. I definitely mm-hmm. would be all over that. And. <laughs> if I could talk to animals and be rubbing it in everybody's face, like I can hear him, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had people say that's just not fair that you can hear him, and I said, well, you can too. But it just, you know, it's it's fun because I love teaching it. I, I absolutely love to teach it. Love to teach people how to hear their own animals. Yeah, well, that is a good place to to plug your um your like Facebook page where people can find you. So, okay. so do you teach people like over the phone or in person or how does that work? I have an eight step program that I like to, to give and uh, I teach people 
I like in person. Mm. You know, I like to have four to six people at a time, you know? Yeah. And it's a lot more fun that way. The energy is, um, when you get six head of horses in a barn that belongs to six different people, it's pretty cool. <laughs> it's real cool. You know, four mm-hmm. or six head, it's, um, I like to do it that way. It's um, with the COVID doing what it's done this year. I haven't done many workshops. Right. And I'm, um, I'm a hands-on person. I like to teach hands-on. Because everybody keeps saying do the Zoom calls, but I I just don't um, feel the energy, Jill, mm-hmm. that the horse and the their person deserve. That's yeah. and that's probably a hang up of my own. I don't but, think uh, so. I, I mean, really like to teach in person. I do too. So, I mean, you know, I do this you? podcast. Oh, good, good. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah, I do this podcast, and it's great. And I have people that I do. Okay, all the kitty cats. <laughs> <laughs> I can hear him that time. Yeah, that tri- he tripped over the uh, heater cord. Oh my okay. god, you guys are ridiculous! I saw somebody sent me a meme of like ready to start my Zoom call, and it was like a picture, like a cartoon, and had a cat duct taped to the wall. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, that is what I need to do. Um, yeah. but anyway. I, I do a lot of online and phone call consults and things like that with people and their horses. But, you know, I've got this client that I'm working with in person and it, there's just nothing like it. You know, I was telling you before the call, we had an incredible breakthrough today and it was just like. Wow, that's it, so awesome. Yeah, there's nothing like being there and witnessing the horse be confident and really come out of their shell. <laughs> My cats are ridiculous. Um, come out of their shell and just tackle whatever you put in front of them and it's just there's nothing like it so i definitely feel you on that front it is way better yeah. and if i could do I, it i tried a way. zoom call and was you know successful the mm-hmm. students were happy that i just never got i just never got what i felt like everybody needed yeah that makes sense and so. if i were teaching and it's not a it's not a subject that you can really teach to people you have to be there in order to have a hands-on with the horse because that's when the learning starts taking place that's you know the communication will come with most people right (laughs) but i do have a technique that i teach yeah i imagine you would have to you would have to kind of be there to be like that's actually not what he said (laughs) you know um because you have to learn to step out of who you are as a human yeah can't imagine that one (laughs) yeah well it's it's um you know i've had a lot of people go oh that's voodoo that da 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 but it's not it's very it's not it's everything is energy always was always is and always will be Mm -hmm. you know the human lesson's been around for many many years yeah we got quantum physics all that good stuff yeah. You're on yeah. the right track. Your Facebook page, um, okay. if people are interested in finding you, um, is Shelly Buchanan Animal Communicator. Yes. Or they can go to my personal page, either one. Okay. Which is Shelly Buchanan. Just Shelly Buchanan. Mm-hmm. I'll link it in the show notes so people can find it. And I'll also share it on my own Facebook page so that mm-hmm. um, it's easier for you guys uh, mm-hmm. to find it. So if you're interested in talking to Miss yeah, Shelley. Yeah, make make appointments. Um, I, I've even put my phone number. They can text. I don't answer the phone. I'll be the first to tell you I don't answer the phone. <laughs> You've answered it every time I've called. So news well, I to know me. your number. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to talk about your rates and things like that a little bit? Sure. What I do is for 30 minutes, it's $30. You know, we do PayPal or Facebook Messenger. Mm -hmm. You know, we can do PayPal. Please do family and friends. (laughs) Not the Um, service one. It takes like 20%. But Facebook Messenger, you can pay through that. I take that. Um, I don't know anything else. I mean, I know there's a lot out there, but those are the two that I work with comfortably. Yeah. Um, I don't have an assistant right now, so I'm having to do the one-man show. (laughs) Ditto. (laughs) After 30 minutes, I charge $2 a minute. But in 30 minutes, we can get a lot done. Yeah. Um, And you're allowed as many horses as you like or dogs. I'll book from 9 to 5, and sometimes I'll take evening calls. I normally don't work on the weekends because I'm out either at a farm or I have a couple of grandkids I hang out with a lot. 
<laughs> yeah, and you're based in Arkansas, right? Yes, I am. Which mm-hmm. is Northwest Arkansas. Absolutely wild. I feel like I'm finding all of these very niche but incredible people that live here that I I'm like, where have you been the whole time I've been here? <laughs> It was just time. It was time for you to start having. I sure hope so. <laughs> I'm yep. excited to to see where this takes us. So I guess with that out of the way, uh, brace yourself for endless emails and phone calls because okay. I, I can imagine knowing myself and my viewership, uh, if I heard a, a podcast like this, I would definitely be booking an appointment immediately. So yeah, yeah. it'll be, it'll be fun. Yes. We'll, um, we'll get to work and do whatever we need to do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I guess let's just burn through some of these questions here. How, okay. do you, how do you keep your mental state healthy and clear enough to be able to communicate? I can imagine, like, with all of the stress of this past year, especially, there's a lot um, personally that could get in the way of communicating with the animals. So how do you prevent that? Well, first off, I try to <laughs> um, keep my mind physically. Mm-hmm. Physical is important to me. I do meditate daily. I have a meditation time That's or impressive. quiet time, whatever you want to call it. That's important for me. How Walking long do you meditate and knowing, for? and that's kind of a wide w- word for a lot of people. But for me, the knowing is knowing that I'm living right now in this moment, this is, and being centered. Yeah. How long do you so, meditate for? Just out of curiosity. Uh, Fifteen minutes. Anything past that, you're wasting time. Good to know. Good yeah. to know because I I can make it about five minutes before I start getting wiggly <laughs> and, well, and that's what most people you know um you know I, i'm 15 minutes every day um i have this i don't really exercise exercise like people go to the gym and do all that mm-hmm. but i have joint movements that i keep up with dance around that kind of silly <laughs> sometimes and sounds more so fun that, to me than going to a gym yeah i'm not a gym person anyway when i quit riding right. horses it was that was my exercise for years. So yeah. when I when I stopped riding, um, I could see a difference in my body, and I didn't like it. So I I stay pretty active. Yeah, but I don't go to the gym. Yeah, I um I've never <laughs> never been to not a, a gym. gym no, no, I can't I can't handle the atmosphere. I'm not about it either. So, so that, you know my mental state. Um, you know, Joe, I never stop learning, and I think that's important for every human being. Yep, Reading I agree. Is important. Learning is important. Knowledge is, they always said, was power. I don't know if it's power. For me, knowledge is... Um, freedom, <laughs> for me. Freedom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good word, freedom. I like that. Has being a communicator played more into your learning about animal behavior, and do you notice things like calming signals and... Can you sense the horses changing emotional states? Yes. Yes. Elaborate. And, um, <laughs> huh? I said elaborate. I'm going to. <laughs> um, when I was working more hands-on, that's when I got to feeling and watching them. And by, by doing the hands-on the way I did for myself for so many years, when I am communicating on the phone, I can feel that horse take that breath or I can feel him shift his energy. That's crazy. And the same way with a dog, which I, I do some dogs, not a lot. I prefer horses just because that's my spirit animal. That's, that's the animal that actually changed my life. You know, so the connection there is really strong in that world for me. Mm -hmm. I can um, visualize, they'll show me their feet, or they'll show me what's going on with them physically. We'll get there. (laughs) Just you wait. (laughs) They do show me, yeah, and I do feel those things. I do feel them calming down. Um, And I've had clients call me, you know, in the next day or maybe a few days later and go, this was the best thing that happened to my horse. Nice. That's got to be rewarding. It does. It shifts their energy. It shifts that horse's energy. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. I can imagine that shifting the human's energy is a big part of it as well. Helping Mm -hmm. them gain a little insight and taking a more compassionate approach to their horses has to be revolutionary, (laughs) I would say. Yes, Um, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, 
Do you get a lot of skeptics at first who convert to believers? Like, what's the wildest story that you're comfortable sharing? Golly, I've had lots of them, Jim. <laughs> I bet. This is no, no. Definitely the people that I've told about it have been like, okay. And I'm like, no, <laughs> you don't get it. Okay, the skeptics that I've had in my life that were really skeptics that became believers, they had a change take place in their life or their horse's life or maybe their dog's life. Those are the, those are the ones that... It takes a little while sometimes, but they always believe. But I've not had anyone ever, ever come back and be angry or unhappy, you know? They turned into believers. Well, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you know, obviously going into something like this, you know that I am taking every precaution that I can to make sure that I have no room for skepticism because I haven't even told you the names (laughs) of the horses that we're going to be discussing because um you know i want it to be authentic for the podcast uh, um mostly i want it to be authentic for me not to put any pressure on you or anything um but i i just i don't want to leave any room for me to be um wishy-washy about like well she could have derived that from you know i said x y and z (laughs) and obviously 90 percent of my life is on the internet but Two of the horses that um, we're going to do here in a bit are, um, there's not a whole lot about them online, so um, my main mare is probably going to (laughs) be the one that everybody's going to be skeptical about, but I am open-minded at least, and I'm the only one that matters. I'm skeptical, that's okay. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) that is fine with me as well, because I'm the only one that has to deal with her, so. (laughs) Well, and, and, you know, it doesn't... um... It doesn't, I mean, it's okay. It's all I can say. It's good. It's all okay. Mm-hmm. Everybody's on their own, own journey. Yep, that's true. So, can you communicate with people long distance too? Like with other communicators? Do you guys have like a, a group chat mentally? <laughs> no, I've never chose to do that. Do people? I don't know if they do or not, to be honest with you. That would be dope. <laughs> now, I've had people call a communicator and then call me and they go, well, she told me the very same thing. Yeah. Or he told me. I go, okay, all right, yeah. A little corroboration. Never heard anybody. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the last question on the front about you specifically is, do you communicate with animals that have crossed over? I know the answer to this question, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, no and yes. You know, I, I don't want to say... I, do, I particularly don't care to. Mm-hmm. And that's an, that's my own personal thing because um, I tend to I'm extremely soft hearted. Yeah. And I can imagine when, that's rough. Yeah. And when that person starts crying or something like the next thing I know, I'm crying with them. Oh no, no! <laughs> <laughs> I would so I, be I, right there. I with don't you. particularly do that now. I like working with the horse in the now, and I like working with the fact that. Um, Let's see what's going on with them right now. Right. Yeah, I can imagine that it would be heartbreaking and also difficult to work with people. And, you know, you and I talked about the concept of helping the people grieve and move on and not keep rehashing the issue. Um, Mm -hmm. So that leads me to another question about um, the, the timeline. So do you... Is there any level of psychic, like seeing the future? You said you're not a prophet, but is there any future prediction sort of thing that happens? Or is it mostly just, horse, how are you feeling now? And how does it work? Go. (laughs) No, I normally, um, the only thing I know about the future with these is if they tell me. You know, I mean, it doesn't pop up. It's not something I look for. When... What I like to look for in the call is normally people want to know how they feel, how they're feeling now. Is there anything going on with them? You know, this type of stuff, Mm -hmm. you know, their illnesses and their health concerns, all this kind of stuff. I've had some of them tell me, like I had a lady call me not too long ago and she's a showman, shows her horse and and she just asked me if he was okay. And I said, you know, we went through the, what we do. And I said, yeah, he's fine. And all of a sudden he said, oh, don't forget to tell her I'm going to win for her. I went, okay, I'll tell her. <laughs> That's so, awesome. you know, sometimes that'll happen. Yeah. But, yeah. 
as for the predict the future, what they might be or what they are, uh, unless they tell me, it's not something that I go, oh yeah, and you're, you know, right. No. That makes sense. So um, then, I guess that leads us into the just general animal communication. Like, how clear is the communication? And does it take place in images? I can't imagine words really making much sense because the animals don't speak English or German or what have you. Um, Or is it more of a sensation? Well, they speak audible to me. Really? Yeah. How does that? Yeah, I can hear them. And I, um, but that was a, that was a journey to learn that. Yeah. If it, to me, the only way that I could make sense of it would be like, are you familiar with the show, The Good Place? (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, like Eleanor and Chidi are supposed to be soulmates or whatever. And yeah. she's like, wow, you speak English, but you're from, I forget what part of the world. And he was like, I'm actually yeah. speaking French, but this is translating it for me. I imagine that's the only way that I could make sense of it in my brain. Um, right. I'm a very logic oriented person. So this is hard right. to wrap my head around. Coming from the family that I came from as well, because my grandmother, she would tell my father things. She'd say, don't do that because this is going to happen or that. So, you know, kind of growing up around it. And then my mother's father was a full-blood American Native um, Pawnee Indian. Wow. He didn't let you know it, though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, he um, he always believed in uh, doing things by the sign. So, you know, it, was, it became easy for me to be comfortable in that, Jill, because... I it was not unusual for my life. Yeah, I can imagine it was, that. It was always be... here. You know, grandfather planted by the signs and you know, he talked about the water and he talked about the leaves and you know, the fields and cuz he was an earth person and so oh. it was really easy for me to believe and then when I first started getting it it started in my throat and then I would trust it. I think trust was the biggest thing I had to learn. Yeah, to trust it. that vulnerability is a, is a strong mm-hmm. concept. I would just, I think growing up in an environment like that would be absolutely incredible. That's something that I really, um, I don't know if it's more of a, re- a regret, doesn't sound like the right word, but it's the best one I have at the moment, of just growing up in a society that just feels so detached from nature. I'm, yeah. I'm on a path where I would like to get more in touch with it. I don't want to go too far down the woo-woo trail, but (laughs) I am on the phone with an animal communicator, so (laughs) I think that ship might have already sailed, but um, I don't know. (laughs) I don't think so. I would just just like to, I don't know, maybe get more in touch with and or focus more on nature and appreciating it because it is, like, I just... That, that idea of your, um, you said it was your father that was very earth-oriented? My grandfather. Your grandfather. My mother's father. Mm-hmm. Just, like, being so in touch with the world around you just seems like such an incredible, powerful way to live. And it, it calls to me. <laughs> I would love to um, embrace that some more. Yeah, he was a man that didn't speak a lot. Um, he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't speak a lot, yeah. but he knew things and he, he never hesitated to show us children things. That's incredible. Ugh. It was. What a pleasure. Mm-hmm. Um, so long distance communication. I'm sure this is a, a hot topic. How, is it easier or is it easier to be with the animal? Um, are you ever unable to get in touch with the animal? No, I'm never able to. I always, some are more talkative than others. Yeah. Um, They always love to show me their personalities, and that's fun. (laughs) I'm excited for that. (laughs) It is fun. Um, I love being with the animals. I really do. Yeah. Because just to touch them, I'm going to sound selfish here as a human, but just to be in the energy of them, right there with them, Mm-hmm. That it's like it fills my cup completely up. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's just um, it's a it's an energy that just is hard to explain, but it, it's just phenomenal. I can do both very easily. Mm-hmm. Um, 
but my favorite is in person, but I don't travel as much like, as I used to. And like I said, the COVID is going to change things too. Right. Well, before you decide that you're not traveling anymore, I'm going to have to haul you out here. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. It needs to happen. I would kill. Well, I hope that my physical health, which um, it is perfect, will always be where I can travel some. I just um, did it for so long and uh, that it was time to relax a little bit. Yeah, no, it's a good good year to do it. So. Yes, it uh, has been. Yeah, and then after everything settles, we'll just <laughs> make you, we'll force you <laughs> to come out here. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, do you ever connect with the wrong animal? Does that ever happen? No. Mm-mm. I figured that was going to be the answer. What'll happen? Okay. So say we're talking, you want to talk about one horse, but another one will come in. Mm. It's like and you then open the door. Go, oh, no, that's so-and-so. And I'll go, well, he has a message or she has a message for you. We'll get back to this horse, but it's important that this horse talks to you. Well, don't the- hold back, sis. <laughs> I want to yeah. know what they all I, I've had that happen on, on occasion, not a lot. Yeah. Um, but they'll always tell me that no that's not the right horse so I'll, I'll go well this horse has a message for you you know I had a, something that happened here just a few weeks ago that was pretty remarkable um, I kept seeing this I thought it was like a red dun or something like that and uh, I asked the person about it I said listen this horse keeps showing up and telling me that he wants to know where she's at and unfortunately, the owner of this mule had passed away. Oh. Yeah. And no one had told this mule. Oh. And, so and he kept looking for this person. That is tragic. You know, oh, my yeah. God. He was in the her- same herd, you know, same family. So those, sometimes that happens. Yeah. But, and you know, I was honored, though, that he came so he would know and i and i conveyed to this person on the call i said please go talk to him and explain to him that his person has left this lifetime oh god i got chills oh yeah it's so sad it is sad so sometimes that'll happen but um, at least he's got some someone looking out for him and now he knows yes um okay so are some animals more intelligent than others or yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You said some are more talkative, so. Yes. They are, and uh, but they all have a place, Jill. Mm-hmm. You know, this one might not be as intelligent as this one. You know, but he's here. They're here for a reason. They came for a reason. You know, yeah. and they, and their job maybe. You know, we may be trying to make that animal into something that that's not even his job. That's not why he's even here. Yeah. Well, yeah. you're gonna get to. Yeah get to yeah. tell me some bit about that <laughs> here shortly <laughs> um so are the animals surprised when you understand them are they like whoa what some of them are because like sometimes they'll be maybe i'll step in and they'll be grazing and they'll pop their head up and i go okay okay mm-hmm. wow who is this and what do you you know but i always try to tell them i'm you know i'm on my way and who i am and all of that and i've had some of them now, this is what really, this is the cool thing. Some of them will go, only God knows how to talk to us. How come you get to talk to us like he does? What? That's and I crazy. go, well, I don't know. I guess he told me to. That's nuts. I mean, you know. It's all one big universal energy. Yeah. I mean, you and I talked before, and my listeners know that I'm not, um, you know, I don't fit within the mold of any... Oh, um, I don't either. <laughs> pre predetermined <laughs> no. religion. Um, so I just I think that's really interesting because I do tend to fall along the lines of more ambivalence of that you right. know, I just don't know, but I do feel like it all has to be connected somehow because of the weird coincidences that I can't wrap my head around. Um, but yeah, that mm. makes sense. That's crazy. I think we're all supposed to stay a little surprised. I, you know what? I'm okay with that. <laughs> I, you know, I'm really good with it because, you know, it's like, I mean, we don't know. I, I Sometimes the greatest answer I have to give somebody is, like, I don't know. You know, yeah. they might have said that or they might have said it, but how do we really know? 
Yeah, I don't. <laughs> and I'm okay with it. I think my head would spin off if I did. Yeah. Just two more questions here before we get to move into sure. our ponies. And we can uh, take a break if you'd like after these. Um, and you can get all, all prepared, whatever you need to get set up. Um, so do the horses communicate their views on things like the, where, the way that they're trained? And if so, have you noticed any trends or patterns among the preferences of the horses? Like, do they prefer you know, traditional or positive reinforcement or natural horsemanship or what do you think? They don't tell me what they prefer. I've never had that opportunity from any one of them, Mm -hmm. but they will tell me when um, they're being improperly trained. Mm. Dun, Mm -hmm. dun, dun. They will tell me about what happened in their past. Mm. Sometimes they'll tell me that. But sometimes the person that has that horse now wants to know because of the horse's behavior. Yeah, I tend to err on the side of caution with training anyway. And while I do think it is fascinating, and of course it's helpful to know exactly what happened, but for the most part I'm like, it doesn't really matter because the way that I train hopefully covers all of those bases anyway and addresses any potential harm that came and then working to overcome that as if it any option happened. That, I don't know if I worded that in a way that's sensical at all, but yeah, it is. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's a good. That's a good way. Good. <laughs> that's encouraging. So, yeah. um, are there any classical behavior tropes with any animal that you disagree with due to what you can sense and hear? Mm. It's kind of a convoluted question, but like, um, like dominance theory and things like that. That animals need to be higher than, um, or that they're trying to be higher than the human, or that they're going to misbehave if you don't keep them in line, things like that? Not really. I think the only thing that I can say that we, they're here for one reason, and that's to heal the human. Oof. Oof, chillies. (laughs) Just think about it. The horse had jobs, always had jobs. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when he first came, he went to war and, you know, he delivered mail and all of the things that had to be done. And yeah. now in this world today, there's not a job for him. Lots of people think <laughs> that they have to have them. They're the highest spirit animal that brings the love that we all need to this world. Without that. them, they just less that we have. Yeah. I believe it. I definitely think horses are the greatest teachers there are. Don't get me wrong. I love my cats and I love my dog, but nothing compares to the horses for me. I'm right there with you. Well, they are a great teacher, and if we will walk with them and beside them, not in front of them or behind them, they will teach us. Mm -hmm. That's what... My training is all about, though I do tend to overcorrect sometime and, and walk behind <laughs> and let them lead instead of um, being with them. But I, I would almost rather walk behind than walk in front of anymore. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I think that is probably a good wrap up of all of the questions. And if you would like, we can go ahead and take a break or we can uh, just jump right into the questions about the horses. There's one thing I want to share and then we'll go into that. Okay. I think of all the horses... Well, we have a misconception. All right. Or I disagree with or Well, I don't disagree with it, I guess. Or they tell me. Sometimes these gildings that are gilded, mm. they came to this earth to be a stud. Interesting. And I, and I get tickled because that's probably the only thing that I can say that some of them, they almost get angry about. Being they gilded? Go, I was supposed to be a stud. I've had some of them tell me that. Hmm. I can think of a few who would probably relay that message to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I'm still kind of going over that question, you know. Um, I can't disagree or anything, but I know that they disagree with us on that sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but. I can imagine it. Mm. I would love to stop saying that, but I don't have any other... <laughs> no, it's okay. <laughs> Being imaginable, being imagined, saying that word keeps you, your knowledge, keeps you knowledge. Now I don't feel so repetitive, so thank you. (laughs) 
Yeah, it does not it keeps you knowledgeable and we can step right into the horses if you'd like okay. or whatever you want to do yeah no i'm totally game so the first one is obviously going to be zoe and i'm not going to say anything to start off i do have questions but i kind of just okay. i don't know what the process is you guide me okay so what i did is i'm connecting my energy <clears throat> with zoe through you okay because you're the person I'm scared <laughs> it's almost like i can always um it's almost like so you can have a visual on it it's almost like uh electricity yeah you know so and it's an energy that i can pick up on <laughs> she's funny i can tell you that <laughs> i'm terrified I can't stop laughing. I just no, because she's funny. Because it's almost like okay, here's what she's showing me, and and so sometimes they show me things like humans. You know, mm -hmm. it's like her, like she's clapping her hands, like woo, they're finally here. <laughs> like okay, Zoe, we're here. Yeah. What's up? I have a feeling she's been waiting for this for a hot second. She has been waiting for oh, it. I'm so nervous. I hate it. Um, she, Okay, and she says, there's only one thing I want to say before we get, before you do whatever it is you do. She goes, Jill's a remarkable person. <laughs> I was stroking my you. ego. Uh, that's good to know. I hope so. Yeah, she likes you. Yeah. Oh, good. That's everyone's biggest question. I asked everybody online, like, what if they could ask their horse one question, what would it be? It was overwhelmingly, do you like me? Do you love me? And yeah, no, she, yeah, she does. Well, that's good to know, because yes. she's definitely my number one. Okay, good. Anything All else? All right. Um, she's really, she has a character. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> she, she's quite a character. She can go from happy to mad in a split second. Oh, dear. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But um, she doesn't get that mad very often, she, she tells me. Um, she would like to believe that. <laughs> yeah, she would. Um, well, she says she gets mad when you don't listen. Yeah, we have quite a history of me not listening, trying to make up um, for it. <laughs> she, says she gets mad when you don't listen. Mm-hmm. Mm. And she wants to know why you don't feed her more food. Of course she does. She likes to eat. I <laughs> know. Mm, she has a, a giant round bale out in her field. And we had to cut her grain because she was starting to get a little bit unhealthy. <laughs> um, so she, she, gets she to, doesn't like to eat. <laughs> yes. Well, positive reinforcement suits her then because <laughs> that's all it yeah. is. Huh. Anything else? else? She said you worry about her feet a lot. Her feet or feet? Her feet. F E E T. Oh, yep. <laughs> you worry about her feet a lot. Yeah. She says I have had some trouble with them, but they're not bothering me right now. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. It's quite encouraging. Is there anything else that she's struggling with physically? That we're going to look at. Okay. Yes, her high, her glute muscles are sore. Interesting. Does she know why? Yes, she does. <laughs> <laughs> she said you haven't been riding a lot with her lately. You haven't been doing what you do with her mm -hmm. um she, she's been running and kicking yeah you know like throwing her butt up in the air you know that type of thing that's what she's showing me mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's why they're sore um that's interesting mm -hmm. does she know why i haven't been riding her she said no not really now I feel bad. I feel like I should have explained it. You probably should have. 
that's where we that's where we make mistakes as humans you know we want this connection with our animals but we don't talk to them but we think we have to talk talk in words like audible words Mm -hmm. we don't have they can be nonverbal yeah and because words are the strongest most powerful vibration in this world yeah they can heal or hurt so um i would talk to her you know non-verbal if you'd like yeah okay let's do this right now since we're kind of connected okay non non-verbally tell her why you haven't been been writing her okay how do i do that do i just like send just, it <laughs> just talk to, just say it out loud yeah. no you don't have to non-verbal okay. do it non-verbal okay Them? Yep. Yeah. She goes, well, I know she's been really busy. Yeah. There's that. <laughs> That's what she told me. That's not what I told her. Mm. She says that she knows that you've been not that you've not been that you've been real busy. Why you haven't been there? Yeah. Does she feel oh, any resentment about says, that? Huh? Does she feel any resentment about that? No. Uh-uh. None. That's good. No. And she says, well, what she told me really is nobody else's business. Well, everybody already knows. <laughs> I said, okay. Oh, they do? On mm-hmm. your podcast or mm-hmm. something? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. I didn't listen to anything because I wanted to make sure that we were all here together. Yeah. So, um... I guess I can just go ahead and tell you. Um, She was diagnosed with kissing spine, and we found out because she had hawk issues, and she, when I would ride her, would constantly swap leads behind, and her back was very tight. And um, I had the vet look at her hawks, and he said that she needed them to be injected. So we went ahead and did that, and it didn't get better. And then I started learning about kissing spine, and I had her x-rayed and it's not super bad but it it is there and um so that's essentially why i haven't been riding her Mm. okay well she showed me her hawks all ago but she didn't say that they hurt okay okay but she showed me her glute muscles yeah because she kicks up all the time yeah She does do that. (laughs) But she she, jumps her, don't you? uh, We used to, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what caused the kissing sign. Really? Yeah. In what way, you think? Because she didn't have a big enough foot on her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She showed me very small feet. Yeah, they're currently quite large. She hasn't been trimmed in a hot second. Well, and she has. She doesn't have any shoes on right now either. Mm-mm. I pulled them a year ago. Okay. Yeah. She likes it that way. Yeah, I like it that way too. I can definitely tell the difference. Have you had her check for metabolic syndrome? Mm-mm. You might want to do that. As in, um, like, she's not processing feed. Yeah. Too much sugar. Yeah. Well, she. <laughs> that's definitely a possibility. Not anymore. Metabolic syndrome in a horse is like diabetes in a human. Right. Yeah. Um, that would be interesting. I, based on her breed, I would not think that that would be an issue. Yeah. Well, that's true. I would think that as well. But it's been my experience in the world today because of the genetically altered feeds that they're now getting Mm -hmm. is disrupting the digestion tract. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I guess another question that I have for her is how does she feel about her, her past like before me and then we'll do with me. Okay. It wasn't too bad. She said it wasn't the best, but it wasn't too bad. Oh, that's good. <laughs> good to know. 
I didn't think she enjoyed <laughs> the past. Well, I didn't think she enjoyed the past. No, well, she, she didn't enjoy it, you said? Mm-hmm. I didn't think so. Oh, okay. She goes, well, you know, here's the thing. We can think that. She was she was used a lot. Mm-hmm. She shows me that she was used a lot. Okay. But it wasn't. But she didn't think it was too bad. I mean, she wasn't like beaten or nothing like that. She was just used hard. Yeah. Okay. When I say used hard, I'm uh, you know, she's showing me that she jumped a lot, and uh, was she a dressage horse? She was with me. She wasn't before though. Okay, because she's showing me the dressage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, and that because she already had some issues that that disrupted her spine I bet it did <laughs> that's what done it she says yeah she um, did and not she, and like she it says, okay now we need to go back she says make sure that you tell my person that it wasn't her fault okay. it was when you when she when you got her, she already had some dysfunctions going on in her physical being. Mm -hmm. Okay, she's showing me that. She's showing me the muscles on the front of her. You know, for, was always tight. Mm. Yeah. And when yes, and when she would try to lift, she could never just lift herself properly. Mm. So what happened was that caused the rest of the muscles down the back to create what happened in the spine. Yeah. I definitely noticed um, watching her jump the way, like right up at the end when we stopped jumping, I went back and watched old footage and she, the way she would jump, it was like she, she pulled her shoulders and front legs with her neck instead of lifting over her back to lift it up. Right. That's exactly what she's showing me. Interesting. So the whole part of that body stayed structurally misplaced. Mm -hmm. you know, did we have inflammation in the muscles? Were the vertebrae out? Was the sternum out? You know, mm -hmm. all of that. It's just you know, like pulleys and chains. Yeah. Just, that happened and then it just went on down through the back. Interesting. Yeah. But before, she always had small feet. They always kept her feet too small. Interesting. She said, oh, they always want me to be pretty because you know I'm pretty. <laughs> yep. That, <laughs> she would know that. Um, so, uh, can you tell what her career was before I had her? Well, let's ask her what she did. She, she jumped. She was a jumper. Not before I had her. Oh, not before you had her? Mm-mm. Okay. She was a racehorse? Yes. <laughs> she was a racehorse. Wow. She goes, well, I was a racehorse, but... Okay. But what? No, it was just funny, because she looked at me... It was, like, nonchalant to her. <laughs> okay. That, yeah. And she was used hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, she it's funny that you said the thing about her being pretty because Sunny, her old owner always told me that um she like everyone at the track always said she's too pretty to be a racehorse. She needs to go yeah. do something else. She needs to be a show pony. <laughs> <laughs> she, she was pretty and she was she was a racehorse, yeah. Mm -hmm. She just kind of nonchalantly picked her head up and looked over at me and she goes, "Well, I was a racehorse." It's like <laughs> Okay. Yeah, she. It was rather non uh, consequential. She didn't do it for too long, but I think that's probably where a lot of her um, physical problems came from. Right. Yeah. It really did. Does she have anything to say about the racing other than it being a non-issue? <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was a non-issue to her. Um, now, there was somebody that groomed her that sometimes wasn't very nice to her. Interesting. I bet Sonny would like his name. Him. Huh? It was a man. 
I groomed her from sometimes. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. I bet. She, I was. She would kick. She would kick at him. Yeah. Just not meanness, just out of honoriness. She has a little honoriness in her. Oh yes, yeah, she does. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she she's showing me. She goes. She's kind of snickering. Goes. I'd kick at him. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, she she is a character. That is for sure. Yeah. That was funny the way she lifted her head up. And she goes. I was a racehorse. <laughs> yeah, she um she didn't do it for very long, but there it was a it was a component of her life before me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. What was her first impression of me? I want to know. Oh. She thought you were a bag of bones. <laughs> yeah. She was too, now, in all fairness. I want to ask her, why did you think she was a bag of bones? She, are you, you must be very tall and lanky or something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because she's not used to, she was not used to having somebody of your stature be around her. Yeah. That's a good point. Jockeys and, are um, very big. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sometimes they <laughs> tickle me. It's because a bag of bones is not something that I've heard out of a horse in a long time, or ever. Come to think of it, <laughs> um, I, I, so I want to know why she's wanting to call you a bag of bones. And she goes, "Well, haven't you seen her energy when she's around her? It's like her bones move all the time." What? It's like your bones. Your energy must be pretty strong. You must vibrate a lot. Oh, dear. <laughs> because that's where the bag of bones come in. It's like your bones, because of your vibration, she she sees you as your bones are clicking together or something. That is absolutely nuts. Um, Why do you that? Just because I, I've had a lot of issues with my body. Like you said, I'm, I am in my 20s. I'm younger. But um, it's... I don't know if it's from hitting the ground or if I have some sort of uh, autoimmune sort of problem, but yeah, um, yeah my body is loud <laughs> and often hurts. <laughs> so that's... yeah, because yeah, and that's how your energy, your vibration is off in your body, Jill, yeah. and that's what she sees. That's and amazing. she keeps showing me this vibration, and it's um, you know like like if you had a skeletal, mm-hmm. now you know have you ever heard a skeleton? Kind of click, 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 click. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's what she's referring to, okay? Interesting. That that's what the body does. Yeah. No, that's yeah. not that dead on. Yeah. Um, and, um, and so I'm going to ask her, so when Jill wrote you, what was that like? And she goes, you changed when you got on her, she said. Yeah. She said your vibration would, that vibration would stop. Yeah, I definitely because when you connect with her, it would stop. That vibration would stop. So whatever autoimmune or whatever's going on in your physical being, she's good for you. Yeah, I, I definitely, um, I wondered because I'd listened to this podcast, um, and you know, kind of a through the grapevine thing. There was an animal communicator who relayed a horse's message to his owner about having. Um, a specific autoimmune disease that wasn't natural to the area that she lived in, so she hadn't ever gotten tested for it, and then she did. And um, I was wondering if Zoe had any medical insight <laughs> on me. Are you? Yeah. Okay, let's see. Hmm. She's. <laughs> She goes, the medical insight I have to give for her, as you call it. Um, <laughs> now, she's a character. Um, she wants you to slow down. Oh, damn it. Can't have yeah. everybody telling me to slow down, okay? <laughs> oh, is everybody else telling you to slow down? Yes. Oh, okay. Um, okay, she said now, uh, oh, she, so, and they call me the vessel. They go, vessel, tell her to ground herself. You're to ground yourself. Interesting. You know anything about grounding? Yeah, I actually have talked about it on my podcast a little bit, um, and okay. um, and I do it with the horses a lot of just like 
being with them. I always, I take it very literally and focus on my feet and just kind of wait until I can feel a vibration in them and do a lot of breathing and taking inventory of the things around me and just like kind of letting go of the busy conscious. (laughs) So um, I'm not sure if that's what you and Zoe mean, but. Well, she says I have some advice for her and I'm like, okay. Okay, let's hear it, Zoe. She wants you just to enjoy going barefoot around her and hanging out with her. She goes, I know it can't do it right now because it's a little cold, but she wants to see you barefoot and and just be. She said, I just want her to be. That's an interesting thing. And I can hear everyone listening going, uh, danger, danger. <laughs> But, oh, um, because of the feet and being around her barefoot? Yeah, but it's it's interesting to me because um, I much, like, I've always had a thing about it. Like, I unless I absolutely have to have shoes on, I never do. And I, yeah. I hate shoes and I hate socks. But, you know, I work around horses, so I have to have them on most times. Right, you do have to have them on. That's true, but you can still be in a setting with her, mm-hmm. you know. And, you know, her energy levels are so far out. I mean, look how... They can hear things, the distance that they hear. So, and their energy levels are strong. So you don't have to be right up next to her, Jill. Yeah. You know, just, yeah. 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 I want to tell you what she's doing right now. And it'll be fun because I want you to go check her. Okay. I don't know. You have to tonight since it's probably dark. But tomorrow, she's, it's almost like an, you know, an octave level of music. She's, she's come down a level. Interesting. Energy has kind of come down. Hmm. Yeah. I feel like both of ours probably have. Um, And it's funny that you say that because, you know, I I compared you to a a therapist earlier. And my therapist always used to say the same thing about me. She was like, right when I get you every time, it's like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. (laughs) And then finally, (laughs) when I've I've gotten the energy out, then it's, it's settled. And I've always seen Zoe as a mirror and mm-hmm. like we reflect each other very well and if one of us gets going the other gets going and then we tend to spiral up together but um yeah. we're both trying to learn how to be able to relax each other i think well i would be looking forward to teaching you how to do that yeah i'm all about it yeah um okay so does she have anything else because i have a few questions that i can ask but i want her no she's clearly done Okay. <laughs> She's up with it for Yep. Um, so, I guess I can prioritize my questions a little bit with her. Um, I wanted to know if she has another name that she prefers to be called, or if she likes her name. She also has quite a few interesting names. So, um, she said, well, they call me bad names sometimes. I went, okay. I don't I know. Says, well, what is bad name? She goes, well, names that aren't mine. She likes her name, and she doesn't care to change it, no. Okay. Yeah, I call her a bunch of different silly, goofy things. Right. She, that's, well, the, she said bad names to her. Um, what is the meaning of her name? Um, are you asking me? I'm going to check here. Okay. I happen to have the computer on, but I, I totally... Um, oh, well, this is cool. It's a Greek name, meaning life. Mm, that's definitely fitting. I didn't know that. I didn't either, but it's always fun to see what they are. Yeah. Yeah, even biblical, it's, um, it's associated with the meaning of life. And so that would, that would, um, help me understand why she likes her name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was, um. E-D before, E-D-D-Y, like Eddie, but E-D. Really? That was kind of my feeling about it. Let's see. I just didn't know if she preferred that one. No, she does not. I don't know. No, she loves the name. Yeah, it's, uh, E-D came from her race name, which was Educating Guess. And I didn't like that either. <laughs> but yeah, yeah she no. has. No. Yeah, it fits her perfect. Yeah, I agree. She definitely is a 
a big life source <laughs> for me and just she's a force of nature. Mm -hmm. Um Okay. So what is her favorite thing that we do together? She goes run. She likes to run with you. Interesting. She always pins mm -hmm. her ears. She does what? She pins her ears. Oh. When we do that. She does? Well, it's because it hurts. She likes to run. That's her favorite thing to do. Yeah. But it hurts. Where? She says all over. What the hell? <laughs> well, I think what we... There's some things that I can tell you about later. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. So, what does she think about uh, writing in general? Oh, well, let me see what she says. Okay. She's okay with it. I mean, it's just... She's not educated. Does she not understand who I am? I go, what do you mean does she not understand who you are? She said, well, I'm to be fast. Go fast. She said, and everybody just wants me to slow down. Well, she's over here telling me to slow down, the little hypocrite. Lady. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that's, that's, she likes to go fast, but it hurts her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, have you ever thought of breeding her? Um, I had, but, um, you know, we had, I've just seen so many things go wrong. And I just, she's, she's too important to me to risk it. Well, with kissing spine, that would be tough anyway. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's my personal opinion. Um, well, she, she liked to be a mama. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can make that happen because I just, I mean, at one point me and Sonny had looked at studs and we had one picked out, but I just got a, a bad feeling about it. And then the next day, Sonny actually talked to a different communicator. Um, this was a year or so ago. And the communicator mm -hmm. said that, um, she said every mare on the farm wanted to be bred except for Zoe. Really? Yeah. Huh, well, She's ready now, but you don't have to breed her. I mean, give her, get her somebody else to hang out with. Yeah. She, um, you know, that does bring up, like, does she like the paddock mate she's with? She thinks they're boring. Interesting. Yeah, she's with her um, half-sister and mother. Mm-hmm. So they would be boring to her, I imagine. Yeah. It was that's so funny that you say that her half brother was in the paddock just the field over um this morning and uh he was trying to get one of the the little brood mares to play with him and she she was laying down and he went over and he's like biting her and making her get up and she got up and she kicked at him and then he mm -hmm. just started going after the ground, pawing, kicking out, bucking, doing zoomies. And Zoe was staring at him over the fence, just like looking at him very intently. And I was like, I, I got the sense that she wanted to, to be playing with him. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, but you know, here's something else too, Jill, that, um, you know, what happened last year won't be the same this year. What happened last week won't be the same mm -hmm. energy for her. You know, that's what sometimes people go, well, this is how she acted yesterday. I go, well, this is today. Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know. Yeah. That's why I like to talk about the now, what's going on now. Right. What they have to do is now. Right. You know, I'm that's very how indecisive. they live. I'm very indecisive, so I get that 100%. Um. So does, what does she think about jumping? She said it was okay. Interesting. She said, you know, I really like to run. Well, we, we combined the two. <laughs> we did a venting. Um, and she was always... Well, she was showing you jumping over streams. Do you jump over streams? Um, Walk or something? We, we did, I mean, like in a venting, there are water complexes that you have to go through 
Um, I'm sure we did jump over a stream, but I can't think of one off the top of my head. Yeah. As well ago, she was showing me going across the stream, and I went, okay. Yeah, I can't think of any hmm. streams that she would be around. Interesting. I'll have to think on that one. Um, mm -hmm. But so, d did she like eventing, or does she miss it? No, she really liked it. Interesting. Yeah. That's that's my new word that I'm hung up on, apparently. Um, <laughs> so, I just, I don't know if, um, like, do you think she thinks we need to leave it in the past, or what? Because I, I definitely have, based on our experience, some mixed feelings about um, whether or not we should pursue that again based on her. Okay, let me see what she... You know, everything is okay with her that she physically can't do it. Yeah. That's pretty much what I suspected. Yeah, she, I mean, it's all okay with her, but she's telling me, she said, physically, I cannot do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does she want to do now? She wants to get better. That's really, because like right now she doesn't, you know, she doesn't feel the best. Mm -hmm. So that's her main concern is getting it better. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, um, is there anything that's bothering her mentally, like a memory or an experience? Um, nope. She said, I'm good to go. <laughs> no, that's good. Um, I didn't really have anything in mind. Um, what does she think about our transition and training? She says, um, well, it's been kind of different. Mm -hmm. She said, I like it. She says, you're softer with this training. Yes, for sure. And she likes that. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um... Is there anything that we do that she doesn't like? Okay. She showed me. What are you doing with her back feet? Oh. See, that was kind of an open question. Okay. Is there anything that you do that, that she doesn't like? Whoever cleans her feet or you pick up her back feet, it hurts her. And that would make sense with the kissing spine and mm -hmm. the hot and all that. It's painful for her. Yeah. Now, you were referring to some other type of training? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, on that, yeah, is there a specific foot that hurts? The mount side hurts worse than the off mount side. So, left, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that's. Yeah, I can't remember exactly what happened. I would have to go back, but she um, she had some sort of injury, maybe an abscess or something. I can't remember, um, but we had a vet out, and he picked it up, and I think he used the hoof testers, and she kicked him. Um, mm -hmm. He was not thrilled about that, um, and ever since our farrier struggles with her her back feet, I don't tend to have an issue with it because when I ask her to pick it up I let I don't hold it and take it from her I let her settle into it mm -hmm. wherever she's mm -hmm. comfortable and then yeah. I then I take it um and hold it but he he likes to just take it away from her and that's why I've decided to learn how to do feet because <laughs> he's not getting that um no matter how many times I tell him he gets very frustrated with her but I've tried to tell him it's a pain thing but um, can she tell you where specifically it hurts? Yes, it hurt when 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 they pick. It, it's almost like when she's showing me when you all pick it up and she bends that knee from there 
I mean, it's like there's this pressure that goes up into the top of the loin. Mm. It hurts all the way up there. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Is there anything we can do about that? Yes. Is that Mm -hmm. the after the podcast conversation? Yes. Okay. (laughs) I want to know what it is. It's killing me, but I'm going to be patient. We'll share. We'll share. Yeah. Um, so, hmm, what else do we have here? Hmm, what do I often do that she doesn't like? Is there anything other than the picking up the feet? <laughs> That's okay, you, you know, like, instead of just how people will pat a horse. Mm-hmm. You pat her on her neck and she doesn't like that. Okay. Because she's sore. Interesting. I'm not a big patter. Um, I do sometimes. Uh, but what does she prefer? She likes to be stroked. Okay. And, and the thing is, what it's the vibration that's created. This horse is extremely sensitive. No kidding. Her whole life, and no one ever understood her. Yeah, I'd mm-hmm. like to think that I do, um, because I'm very much the same way. Like right. I said, but, you know, th- little things like that that we'll do as a human. You know, okay. like just patting her or something like that. You know, we don't realize what it does sometimes. Yeah. No, she is. She is very sensitive. That has yes. always been, no matter trainer, positive reinforcement, natural horsemanship, traditional, eventer, dressage, oh. all of them always say this mare is ridiculously sensitive. She is, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. I appreciate it about her. It makes her an incredible partner. She's yes. a brilliant teacher. Um, yes. So if there is anything that she could change about her life, what would she? What can I do better? She, to have more feed, she says. <laughs> Not if you're metabolic. Yeah, I want you to check her because I'm almost sure she is. That's why she likes to eat. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Ah, that's, that is weird. I mean, I guess from being on the track and having a lot of sweet feed. Um, stress. Yeah. The stress and the feeds both. Yeah. Yeah. A highly sensitive horse like that Mm -hmm. is going to have some issues, physical. Yeah. No one understood her when when she started her life. Yeah. When she was a colt. All they saw was the the breeding on the paper. Mm -hmm. And beautiful because she's tall. She's got legs. I mean, she's gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Uh, All they saw was the beauty and the win. Yeah. No. I I definitely... You know, when the racehorses are... I, I know because I used to own them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I will vouch for Sunny that she has come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, listen, we all have. Yes. So, um, but back then that was definitely a, uh, an issue. Um, that's what we did. Th- yeah, that's the way it was until mm-hmm. the trainers now are learning so much more and actually having these horses stand up underneath themselves longer and be on the track longer and you know yeah yeah i had racehorses i know exactly yeah so um what is her um like does she have any pieces of equipment that she doesn't like or um things that she has to deal with you have a bit that she doesn't like Mm mm-hmm has a roller in it she says it's too narrow for her mouth it pinches her a roller in... you have a roller bit i did a long time ago but i quickly realized that she did not like it and ditched yeah, that one that's the only one yeah um yeah. interesting yeah. how does she feel about blankets I love a blanket on nice, cold nights, mm-hmm. but otherwise, they're too hot for me. Hell yeah. I feel like a good owner right now. <laughs> um, I definitely used to over-blanket her, and um, 
now I I have one on her at the moment because she's um because it's freezing outside and wet. What? And I can't not. I tried because you know all the articles say you shouldn't, but you know what? It's a sheet. <laughs> it's not much, just enough to keep her dry. Um, sure. And she uh she used to bite me or not bite me but bite at me and was very adamant about me not putting it on. Um, does she have any thoughts about that? Yeah. <laughs> she said, when are you people going to understand that I am body sore and those things used to hurt me mm. when she was really sore? Yeah. You've apparently done a lot with her. Yeah. Because she's not as body sore as she used to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Uh, does she have any questions for me? Anything to ask? Let me see. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but she is just on it. She goes, yeah, ask her when she's going to come out and play with me. Oh, God. I know. Oh my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. I know, that is definitely Zoe. And, uh, making me feel bad. I want to. Um, and you know, you and I talked about it the other day when we had a, a call that it's just uh-huh. been like, yes, I've been busy, but also I just haven't felt called to do it. Um, uh-huh. so I don't know. I would like to. Okay. Um,. Is there anything else? I t- Here's what I told her. I said, look, Jill's going to come and see you since the weather warms up a little bit. Okay. And she's okay with that. No, we're good. She's good. Awesome. She's excited that you have came to her in um, communication. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I... Oh, she wants me to know, she said, I want you to um, tell Jill I know how smart she is. (laughs) Well, tell her I know how smart she is. (laughs) Okay. She is probably, if not absolutely, the most brilliant horse I've ever worked with. And the most gorgeous, so, you know, that doesn't hurt. Absolutely does not hurt. (laughs) Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, all right. If that she's very comfortable, very happy. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to know that she trusts me and enjoys what we do, and that I'm on the right track with her, and not doing something that doesn't feel great. And I'm like itching to hear what you have to say about um, everything else. No, you are on the right track with her, and um, she just um, yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Okay. She just um, and she's thankful. Okay. That you understand her. Yeah. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad I do. Um, yeah. Her past owner took care of her, she says. Mm-hmm. But she didn't understand her like you do. I think that's fair. You know? She understood her, but not like you understand her. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, all right. I think we can swap up ponies here. Okay. So, the next one is... Miss Lex. Miss Lex? Mm-hmm. Her name is Lex. Or Lexi. Oh. But I prefer oh. Lex. I don't know. What is her preference? <laughs> She's not as much as a conversationist as Zoe is. Mm-hmm. She's not as outgoing as Zoe is. She's a little more laid back. <laughs> she wants to know why we're bothering her. <laughs> it's it is late. Well, I want to know about her. Well, she's a little snippy compared to Zoe. Interesting. She goes, "Well, what do you want to know?" <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll ask. What does she think about me? She thinks that you're always in a hurry. 
Okay, fair. Listen now, Jill, this horse is laid back compared to Zoe. Mm hmm. So her energy levels are much different than Zoe's. And so everything that you do with her, it almost disgusts her a little bit because you're always in a hurry. Interesting. I but definitely. That's your, but that's your energy. Understand that. That mm -hmm. might not be your movement. Hmm. But that's your energy when you approach her to do things. She's really a slow. She. What, do you know what her birthday is? Uh, March. March, April, just what I thought. Yeah. Um, she is, uh, I've always read her as more, um, unsure and nervous, more so than chill. No, she's chilled. You might read her that way, but her energy is, she's kind of, she's laid back inside. And she said, so I'm asking, I said, now Jill reads you like that. Why, why is that? And she goes, because everybody wants me to be like that. She said, I'm highly, she's sensitive, um, emotionally sensitive. Mm, yeah. Emotionally uh, sensitive. So when I say that, it's like, um, she can get her feelings hurt real easy. Yeah. Yeah. And so she, you know, being laid back is what she wants. And that's who she really is. But no one's allowing her to be that. So yeah. she stays on the muscle. She does what? Stays on the muscle, kind of up, or like you all call it, nervous. Oh, okay. Interesting. She's not really getting to be what she needs to be. Well, that is encouraging because <laughs> I would like for her to be who she is. And, you know, obviously I would like for her to be calm and quiet um especially if that's her nature it is her nature mm -hmm. okay well how do i help her embrace okay, that she's showing me <clears throat> she says that <clears throat> you need to connect with her okay she's showing me to just take your hand and go from her withers very quietly, very softly. And, and she said, just, just have her come to me like an ocean wave that's barely moving. She said, you'll understand that. Oh, okay. But she, she's showing me that you're, you splash in as a strong ocean wave. And she wants you to come in as a softer ocean wave. Okay. All right, you're going to start at her withers and just imagine your hand... It's just a nice soft wave. And she just wants you to go down her spine all the way down, all the way to the very end of her tail. Okay. And she wants you to come back up with the other. Now, that's with your right hand. And she's showing me with the left hand. She wants you to start just behind her ear and come down her um, neck mm -hmm. on top of the vertebrae. All the way down into the shoulder. She's showing me coming up the shoulder and connecting with where you started at the withers. And she wants you to do that on both sides. And she said, please, please, please tell her to come to me like a soft ocean wave. I go, okay, okay. That makes sense. Yeah, and you do it on both sides. That's really interesting. And then, she, then she wants you to take her, your hands and go down each leg and connect her to the ground. She doesn't feel connected. Okay. They tried to raise her? Um, they were going to, but she never made it to any race training. But I would imagine that she's heard it a lot. <laughs> yeah, they, because she's, she, she goes, they wanted to race me. Mm-hmm. So I'm asking her, why did they, why did you not let them race? She said, because I stayed. She's laughing. She said, you call it on the muscle. They call it nervous. I said, okay. Because when a horse will get nervous like that, they'll pull all their muscles up and become tense mm -hmm. on the muscle. That sounds more like and Zoe than Lex. <laughs> kind of um, like if you're, you're doing a collection or something. Um, yeah. Uh, she goes, she didn't want to race. Yeah, well, we didn't race her because she's um, she was too little uh, when it yeah. was time to go to training. 
But she said, you know, they broke me out too young. She's immature. She is actually not broke to ride. Yeah, she's immature mentally. Yeah. Um, we... Well, that doesn't mean that she was... I, she's, th when she said that, that doesn't mean she broke to ride. When they said they broke her out, when they broke her out, I mean, she was showing me that they were breaking her out, trying, thinking about getting her ready or trying to get her ready for race training. Mm. And, it, and it, she just... It was, it's almost like she's showing me she, she just couldn't get her mind settled. It was just like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah, and that's that's what I tend to see from her is more just struggling to settle. Yeah, she, but that's not... Her immaturity is part of it. Yeah. She's too young. She, she is young. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's actually going to be up to me to take her and get her started under saddle. So I wanted to ask her what she thinks about that. Is she open to having a rider? Not yet. Not yet. Well, good thing I've been procrastinating. She needs a lot of groundwork. Yes, that that is the plan. She can rest yeah. easy on that fact. I'm okay, definitely... I'm going to tell her that. Okay. So, do you use... Um... Oh, no, yeah, the, what I mean, do you use a whip, not, not to whip them, but just to kind of get them to move? Um, I, I don't, I, I don't in general, but I don't, I'm trying to think back if I've ever used one with her. I don't think so. Hmm. Well, she's saying don't do that. I'm like, okay, I'll tell her. Okay. Um. This horse's eyesight. Ah, 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 this is what's wrong. She's showing me, if you'll look at her, her eyes are narrow. She's narrow. Mm -hmm. Her peripheral vision. She showed me that because she says she can't see. Her peripheral vision is limited. Like, so, almost like she has predator eyes? Yes. Hmm. Always remember that when you go into training with her, okay? Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, looking at her, um, she has very big eyes, but they are more in the cent like more pulled to the center of her head. Yeah, yeah, her peripheral vision is limited. So whatever you train her with, talk to her nonverbal. Okay. And tell her what you're going to do each time, and make sure she sees it. Yeah. Cause she'll spook real easy at stuff. <laughs> Yes. Um, okay. Uh, she's healthy. She goes, I know that they all worry that I'm not healthy. She's healthy. She's that way. And she's healthy. This horse is healthy. Okay, well, that is frightening because that was literally my next question. I had opened my mouth to ask it. <laughs> oh! <laughs> I was going to ask, is there any pain anywhere? Um, no. None. Okay. Mm -mm. Awesome. Um, she feels good. Um, she likes the connection with you, but she said, would you please tell her to slow down? Okay. I can do okay. that. I, I definitely, um, you know, I told you on our, um, last call before the podcast that, um, I do tend to be very go, 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 a million tabs open in my brain at all times. And, uh, <laughs> the, the horses, uh, are generally not very receptive to that. <laughs> no, I have to <laughs> have to work very hard to get me to settle. Oh, you tickle me. Yeah. Oh, I was also going to say you're talking about the um the wave situation with um touching her like that. And I was trying to think why she would know that and um it's crazy because are you? I'm sure you are. Uh, the Masterson method. I'm familiar with it. Yeah. The um, oh god, what is it called? The um, something bladder. Oh, the gallbladder meridian. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. So I I had learned about that a while back, and I tried it on Zoe, and she had none of it. And I was like, okay. And I was, you know, he's like a bit two inches back and four inches down, whatever. And I was like, I was trying so hard and I just, I could never get any reaction at all from any of the horses. And I was like, I just suck at this. And then, um, 
we had our, our trimmer out working with some of the horses and, um, Lexi's brother, Teddy was the first one I did it on. And, um, because I get bored holding horses for the trimmer and I just, sure. and yes. I, I want them to relax and be calm. And sometimes, you know, scratches are too high energy for being calm and, um, sure. stroking isn't enough. And I was like, well, what if I give that a shot? And so I just kind of felt around until it felt right to me, which sounds, you know, woo woo, but <laughs> this is the You're learning. Yeah. And so, um, cause I think I probably pulled it from our conversation where you were just like, tell me where you need it. And so I was like, okay, let's try that mentality. So instead of like trying to figure out mathematically where the exact location was, I mm-hmm. just put my hand on his neck where I thought felt right. And then I started it and I got some crazy reactions out of every single horse that I did it with. And I'm barely touching them. And I got lots of hard blinking, licking and chewing, head shaking and all sorts of different stuff. And, you know, not light enough to be like a fly and bother them, but also not hard enough to be like a massage. But that absolutely blew my mind. And I didn't do it with Lexi because uh, she did, she doesn't get her feet done. <laughs> called the butterfly effect yeah i wonder do you think that's what she's talking about or is this huh yes see see, you know when because of of your energy is high Mm -hmm. you you that's a lot for a horse (laughs) yes (laughs) i mean it just is Uh so we went in there with that full energy at first and they didn't get anything then you backed off with a lighter energy they were like, oh, this is it. But you allowed your own physical being to connect with your spiritual being in asking, okay, and trusting. Yeah. And then it was. That's absolutely what it felt like. Yes. Um, you know, I probably wouldn't phrase it as spiritual being, but I definitely asked. So I don't know who I'm asking, but I was more like, I don't know well, where your, it needs your, to be. Your go. intuition. Yeah. For the lack of better words, yeah. Yeah, okay. You're yeah. asking your intuition, because we all have six senses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good movie, and, too. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, cool. Um, so, is there anything memory or, or experience-wise that bothers her? <laughs> nope, I'm good. Okay. Um... Does she have anything that she is afraid of that she doesn't like that we do? She said, not now because you told her what was wrong with me. I went, okay. She was afraid of a lot of things because of her vision, Jill. Mm, Okay. A lot of times she couldn't see things that you all were doing to her. And so she's showing me she would back off, back sideways from you sometimes. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because she couldn't see what was going on, and she needed to see. Interesting. So, now I'll tell you what she's afraid of. (laughs) Needles. Yeah. She can see them. How do I help her with that? Mm, That's a tough one. Does she have any insight? (laughs) No pun intended. I'm telling you, she says, would you like them? I said, well, no, I'm not a needle person myself. <laughs> um, Unfortunately, they are a bit necessary sometimes. Um, yeah, they are sometimes. You know, I just, my experience was I just did a, you know, tapping with the back of my hand and then would kind of ease one in there. She does not, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's just going to be a horse that, and she doesn't like them. Yeah. Um, but what happened was the first one you guys gave her scared her, she says. I believe it. And it's... she said, nobody told me what they were going to do to me. She says, do you know how many times that's happened to me? And I go, nope. Mm-hmm. She goes, hundreds. Yeah. She... So this is a horse that's very important. You tell her everything you're going to do because she can't see very well on the side because okay. her vision is not good. Yeah, she had joint ill as a a filly so she got needled a lot i bet she did 
and um, our vet is not the gentlest, easygoingest, compassionatest individual. Uh, so he's a little bit yeehaw, get her done, and uh, he's very rough with them. And now that she's bigger, and you cannot be rough with her um, mm -hmm. to get the job done, and that's not my style anyway. But um, I've only been able to give her a shot once because she was colicking. Um, and I gave her uh, an IV needle and she accepted it. And I was very, very happy and very proud. And then uh, when she colicked again, she um, would not accept the needle. And we had to give her an oral medication. I don't imagine she'll ever accept them. Well, that's not great. Um, because <laughs> we can find out as time goes on. Yeah, I, I'm hoping to sort of do what they do at the zoos, um, and have the animals have control over it. So, mm -hmm. and offer her yeah. the ability to see it coming. I think would help her based on what you're saying. A bunch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because right now all she's doing is telling me I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, hopefully I can help her. It really made her mad, she said. Yeah, I bet it did. She said, I can't believe they did that to me. I hate that for her. Well, and see, the thing is, we take them out of what they what they know. Mm -hmm. You know, they were never, I mean, they were wild. And they were wild animals. Mm -hmm. And taken and they did all these things for us over the years and we didn't used to have to give them shots you know years ago and stuff because society was different so now we have to care for them just like us basically mm -hmm. so um, it, they don't always understand the stuff that we do to them and mm -hmm. we don't even think about non-verbalizing or trying to even because when, sometimes when we verbalize the horses like her um or zoe mostly um it's loud in their ears yeah. That makes so sense. a lot of times I tell people just use nonverbal communication. They understand that. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Noted. Because um, I have a strong voice, and I've had horses tell me, could you just, like, tone it down? Yeah, I feel like a few horses have been trying to say that to me for quite some time. <laughs> 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 um, okay. Well, what does she really enjoy doing? She said nothing. As in she doesn't know? Um, or she no, just... She just really likes doing... She said, I know what they want me to do, but I'm, I'm not going to do that. What does she think we want her to do? She thinks that you want her to run fast. Oh, well, I don't want her to run fast at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to um, see if she would enjoy jumping at some point. Well, she was showing me jumping while ago. And I thought, well, I'll wait and see. Because you'd asked that question a little bit earlier, what, you know, what maybe she'd like to do. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I I would like to see if that would be something she'd be open to. Um, you know, I mean, I guess it's hard. I mean, I, I, I would assume she's seen me or Sonny riding other horses and jumping them. But um, I don't know. I don't know that she's ever done it. Because <laughs> um, yeah. she's not... She's not been started under saddle. How old is she? Three? Yeah. Yeah. Dead on, coming four year old. Yeah. I'll be getting a saddle on her pretty quick, but that's my personal opinion. <laughs> no, I mean I I'm not in a rush about it. Um I wanna take it slow and um do it systematically. Um Well that's true, but I mean she's getting old enough now that you could easily you you put a blanket or anything on her? Mm -mm. No. Nope, she is all natural, cow gal. She just hangs wow. out in the field. And um, I've done a little bit of work with her, but I haven't really started anything just yet. But um, I don't, I mean, I've been living out here for two years. And so I've known her since she was a yearling. And she just mm -hmm. never really stood out to me. I mean, I... I thought she was gorgeous, but she, um, never really, like, I just didn't really acknowledge her until this past year, um, mm -hmm. or these past couple of months, really, I've felt a really strong pull towards her. So is there anything that 
Lex would like me to know as we go into writing or any future work. The only thing she wants you to know is to take your time. Okay. All righty. Well, I feel like that probably wraps her up. Oh, wait. Okay, I do have one question. Does she like her name or does she have a different oh. name? Um, yeah, no, she likes her name. Yeah. Okay. Cool beans. So we can move on to pony number three. Okay. Okay, so her name is Azula. Okay. What does she have to say? Well, she's rather um, studious. Mm-hmm. I said, hello, Azula. And she she goes, well, hello. <laughs> I asked her, so what do I need to tell Jill? And she goes, what are you talking about? I said, is there anything I need to tell her about how you're feeling? And she goes, no, not really, not of hand. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's studious. Okay. And she goes, well, hello. Yeah. <laughs> I believe it. Um, yeah. Does she have a um, a best friend? Her and Lex. Lex? She really likes Lexi. Interesting. Mm-hmm. I don't think they've ever really been near each other. Don't need to be. Okay. And they're in the same area, though, right? Like, the same... The same farm, farm. Sure. yeah. But yeah, farm. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She's not much older than Lexi? Uh, she's not older than Lexi at all. <laughs> yeah. She's, she's more mature, though, than Lexi. Interesting. She... No, that's why I'm picking up... I'm picking up... The energy I'm getting off of her is an older energy than Lexi. Okay. So, um... She's definitely not <laughs> physically. No, but she, she's mature. She's she's already very mature. She would like to think so, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, she is. Does she like the boys? She goes, you know those are really stupid questions. <laughs> like, okay, I'll tell her that. Um, yeah, she says we're a herd. It's okay. She is definitely a storm cat line. <laughs> yeah. Sassy. In the spirit of asking more stupid questions, what does she think no, about me? <laughs> she's studious, so you know we're gonna have to be careful because she's gonna she's gonna think that we do ask stupid questions. No, but I want to know what she thinks about me and humans. Oh, she likes the way you smell. She said, you know, she always smells nice. Oh, well, that's I mean, good. her 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 energy voice is she always smells nice. <laughs> I mean, she's very studious. It's just cracking me up. It's funny. Yeah, she is a very good student. She's very yes. smart. Um, well, I mean, it's it's difficult to ask her questions because she is so young. And Zoe's yeah. easy because, I, I mean, I've been with Zoe for since she was three and she's nine now. So quite a while. But um, Azula is... Um, she'll be a yearling on January 4th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So she's a, a young January little lady. January 4th? Huh? You said January 4th? Mm-hmm. She'll be a year? Yeah. Well, that makes sense. Why do you say that? Well, she's just mature for her, for her age. She's very mature for her age. She's like an old soul. Yeah. I get that mm-hmm. vibe too. Um, so, I guess I'd like to ask what her life was like before we got her because I don't really know much about the people that we got her from. Uh huh. Okay. It, it was fine. She's not showing me anything that was out of the way, other than she was weaned too young. Well, that's interesting because she's not weaned currently. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, we did take her from that place, though, with her mom. They both... Okay, came. well, maybe that's what she's talking about. I don't know. She, um... You haven't had her very long? Uh, we got her this summer. 
yeah. and her mom and her dam is ours now. Um, oh, okay. So we own them both. But she, have, but she hasn't been weaned off of her mother. Uh, we um, we started fence line weaning. Um, mm. So she's um, she's in a separate pen, but they're right mm. next to each other. And her mom. We started off very like small, um, and had the mares in a round pen, and the babies just kind of hung around the round pen, and then moved them into two separate paddocks, but they were mm-hmm. on that they shared a fence line. And then we opened up the mare's field to where they could go a little bit further from the babies. And Mm -hmm. um, so, but yeah, she still shares a fence line with her mom and hasn't been separated yet. So she's still suckling her mom? Mm -mm. Nope. Her mom is pregnant, so (laughs) she will be, she'll be having a foal in March, I believe, is when she's due. So that's why we're starting mm. the weaning well i'm at, she was just in her mind she was weaning too young interesting mm-hmm. she could she's she's not um she doesn't give me the energy of a cult that wants to be away from her mother okay i mean it would make sense at the the place that they were at her and her mother shared a fence line with another brood mare and philly and um she and her mom just hung out the whole time um yeah she was untouched when we got her so um i wonder why why didn't she want people to touch her azula didn't want them to touch her Mm -mm. she she was Uh, untouched at five months old wow yeah (laughs) you were the first one to touch her Yes. Yeah. She's showing me you were the first to touch her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She had a, a tick in her armpit. Mm. And I got it out, and then the next day I found one on her belly, and she let me pull it off her belly. Um, mm-hmm. But... Nobody wanted to touch her till you came along. They said That's, they did. Yeah, she said, no, no, they really didn't want to. They had to, but nobody really wa- You wanted to touch her. Oh, I see. Okay. You yeah. know, you really wanted to do something for her. Mm-hmm. You wanted to care for her. Nobody else really wanted to do anything. Okay. They, they did it because they had to do it. Yeah. She, um... Yeah. That's going to be important to that cult. Okay. Because she wants people to do things with her um, because it's important for them to do things with her. Not yeah. because they have to do things with her. Okay. Well, that will be something to bookmark for sure. Yeah. Because, yeah, she really likes she likes that because she likes you for that reason, you know. Okay. Because you wanted to make a difference for her. Yeah, for sure. She, um, you know, the people that owned her, they're they're so sweet and kind. But they, um, they just, they kind of do the bare minimum. Um, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's just for not knowing better. Um, but they both came to us, her, her dam and her with, um, you know, coats that exhibited overfeeding of iron and they hadn't mm-hmm. been dewormed properly. So they were both really greasy and awkwardly mm-hmm. fuzzy and it's in the dead of summer and um yeah yeah, it was they were both disgusting and (laughs) when i first met azula i was not all about it and then the when i took a second to actually like look at her and work with her she just absolutely wiggled her way right into my heart (laughs) and that little filly is something special for sure and did you I, see what you did for her, though? Look at the difference, Jill. That's awesome. Yeah, well, thank you. I mean, I hate because I don't want to fault the other people. I just really think they don't know. No, I understand. They just don't know. And yeah. there's there's lots of that out there. I'm going to tell you. There's mm-hmm. lots of that. Yes, there is. Um, but, yeah, they're very happy with how she looks now. And she's ours, so we don't have to worry about it. And her mama and the baby that she's carrying is also ours. 
So um, it'll be interesting to see what the the other baby looks like, being on our grain and worming and everything like that. Um, but yeah, um, I guess is there anything else that Azula would like me to know? She said, "Just remind you to be my friend always." Okay, will do. No. Um, what about racing? Um, is that something you think she would enjoy or she thinks she would enjoy? She and, says, you know, I'm not going to be very fast. I did not think so. Um, <laughs> did you know that? Uh, yeah. I mean, she's little. She's tiny. Yeah. And she said, I'm not going to be very fast. Yeah. She loves children. Children? Yes. She has a sense for children. Interesting. I have never <laughs> seen her around the children. She's not been around children, though. Yeah. Has she? I don't know. I don't think so. No, I mean, on your place she has them. She's not showing me children. She just has a, she has a sense for children. Okay. So, you know, um, yeah, she's not going to be a big, big horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I did not think so. She is quite small. Yeah. Um, she would like a child. She she wants to be a young person's horse. She doesn't care about racing. Okay. She said, I'm not going to run very fast. Interesting. I'm hesitant to find her a young person, though, because that does typically involve a line of rehoming and rehoming and rehoming oh yeah no 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 i'm i'm you probably you need to go ahead and train her Mm -hmm. you know in whatever i see her doing small jumps okay okay with a young person not like you know like a teenager type person okay okay um but you're to you need to train her okay yeah. Well, she's more encouraging than Lex is. <laughs> yeah, she is. Yeah, Lex don't care. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, now she wants to learn things and be things and do things. But she's, um, this is a caretaking horse. Okay. Yeah. You mean Azula? Yes. Okay. Interesting. Uh-huh. She's so little, I just can't see her anything more than a little filly right now. It's hard to imagine. Oh, she'll grow. Yeah. Well, her mother is probably one of the sweetest mares I've ever met in my life. And she loves her baby. And she is just so chill and calm and sensible. And I can definitely see her being, um, you know, a younger person's horse. Uh, mm-hmm. So... It makes sense, but I've only really ever seen Azula be a spicy little punk 90% of the time. No, well, she's a baby, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She definitely is, and she has an attitude and a half. She loves to lay those ears back, especially around the boys. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, she really thinks they're pain. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. But... She- she told me that in the beginning of it. She said, well, you know, there's just kind of a pain in my... Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> she she definitely gives that vibe. So maybe we'll do some rearranging and stick her out with Lex and put um, Zoe's half-brother out with her or something. With yeah. Zoe, I mean. Um, well, alrighty. Um, that is all for them. And um, did you want to do Ghosty? the one that is now appropriately named (laughs) because she has passed on? Um, Sure, we can try. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I know, I'm getting a little bit brain dead as well. Uh, It's like, okay. Yeah, Jill, I'm thinking, all right, man, I'm wearing down, kid. Yeah, me too. My eyes have been unfocusing here and there. Um, But yeah, so we can make it pretty quick. Um, Okay. I just want to touch base with her um her name is ghosty um yeah take it away (laughs) 
She was your horse. She was Sunny's horse. Um, I competed her though. Yeah, she were, you were you. I I know, but you were her horse. You were her person. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she was a really cool mm-hmm. mare. She was. Yeah. She wants to know what you want to know. Um. I guess I want to know if um, she's at peace or if she's worried about anything. She's at peace. Okay. You know, they get la- they laugh at us sometimes. Because <laughs> they go, we're always at peace here. Yeah. <laughs> she was always far wiser than me. She was a, a fantastic mare, and uh, we have her her colt, um, Astro. Oh, okay. Yeah. And you jumped her. Yeah. Yeah, she liked it with you. Yeah, she was a beast. You soft hands. Thank you. Appreciate that. I have uh, a fantastic picture of her jumping me way out of the tack just an incredible jump and uh i've got my reins slipped about as far as they can go because i didn't want to hit her in the mouth and that happened a few times because she was more talented than i was <laughs> yes, and she loved it great yeah she um, loved it that's awesome um she wants to tell you a secret okay she said tell her i loved her oh she really did love you. Yeah. And she had a warmth about her heart for you. Yes, she absolutely did. She was a, a phenomenal yeah. mare. She, um, I was the one that, um, found her when she was, she got cast. Um, I think she was colicking. Well, I know mm-hmm. she was colicking. And it was a weird series of events, um, where I, I had been working with, the other cult, Dexter, and his halter accidentally came off, and I was like, well, shoot. And he ran from me in the field, and I was like, okay, brat, <laughs> I will address this when you come in tonight. So he came into the stall um, with his mom, and I was working with him, and I noticed that Ghosty had shavings up on her back, and I was like, that's odd. The stalls are kind of small. She doesn't normally lay down in here. Um, and then she laid down again, and I was like, that's not good. And so I called Sunny. And I was like, you know, she's, I think she's colicking. And just the same time Sunny says, why, why do you think she's colicking? She rolled and got cast up against the wall. And, um, I immediately hung up on Sunny and called the people that also work here and was, and was like, you need to get in here immediately and help me unroll this horse. I can't do it by myself. And, um, I just stayed by her and petting her, telling her it was okay, making sure she could see Astro um, and, uh, we hold her to the vet and she was twisted. We think that, um, you know, maybe something went wrong during labor or something like that. Um, cause Astro's gigantic and, uh, she, she was twisted and there was nothing we could do. And so she had to unfortunately get the needle and, um, then we took Astro home screaming and hollering um on the trailer and it was traumatic for everyone (laughs) so i just i don't know i just hope that she's she understands what happened and why and that we're here for astro and gonna make sure that he's happy and taken care of for the rest of his life yeah she's she wants you not to worry she said You know, Jill tends to worry about all of us. I went, okay. (laughs) Um, All of the horses. You tend to worry about all of them. Yes, for sure. Yeah, she said you did. And she had a stone in her gut that caused the twist. Like a rock? Well, what happens is they will will get stones sometimes, just like a gallstone or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She had one. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um. And in labor, he tried to come out of her rectum, and oh. they caught it and helped. 
that situation, but I mean, it really could have been anything. It just, um, it sucked. But my, my biggest thing was I was just glad that I was, it was just a random day and I had no reason. I didn't normally work with the babies at night like that. And I just happened to be in the right place at the right time that I caught it just as it happened. Like I watched her roll against the wall so she didn't have to suffer stuck upside down all night. Oh God. Yeah. And I just was, if it had to happen, I was glad it happened like that. So I could, right. could help her. Yeah. Cause she, she wants to remind, she said, make sure that, you know, she didn't suffer. Okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. You're, you being there created her from not suffering. I'm glad. Yeah. Because it, mm. I suffered. I hated that. It sucked. Ugh. But, I mean, like I said, I'm glad if it had to happen that that's the way it did. Because everything went smoothly. And there was no major issue. But I just wanted to make sure that she knows that her baby is okay. And um, the nurse mare took fantastic care of him. And awesome. So he's... He is the most resilient little foal I've ever met in my life. He doesn't seem to have any stereotypes or issues from her loss. So, um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, he's he's brilliant. So, yeah, sure. I think I think that's she's, probably it. She's okay. what? It's been a pleasure. Yeah, it absolutely has. Um, and I appreciate you doing so many because we've been talking for two and a half hours. It has been quite a long evening, yes. <laughs> yes. I, I warned you. <laughs> I told you it was going to be it's long. It's quite all right. Yeah. And now that we're both like... <laughs> like, okay, time to quit. Yeah. No. Um, well, I I thoroughly appreciate you doing this. And You're welcome. Thank you. I had a blast. Um you know, getting to talk to all the different horses. I feel exhausted. I don't know what you've done to me, but. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Yeah, it's, it wore me out. Yes, it will. Ugh. Yes, but. It's, it's, you will sleep well tonight. Yes, I sure hope so. I need it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I guess as far as people getting in touch with you you've got shelly buchanan animal communicator on facebook and i'll be sure to link that in the uh, show notes people can also contact you um at your like personal facebook page which is just shelly buchanan and then would you mind repeating your email if people would like to it is yeah shelly buchanan and then let the number four Mm -hmm. animals at gmail.com yes and shelly is is S H E L L E Y? Yes, I almost beat you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that is going to about wrap it up. So Shelly, thank you for taking oh, the time. Jill, it was this. fun. Yes, it's absolutely brilliant. Um, do you have anything that you would like to leave the people with? Oh, light and love, and mm-hmm. enjoy your horses. Yes. I think. Come to know them. Come to know them. I think that's my biggest thing anymore is come to know them. I think that is is a great sentiment. They're marvelous. Yes. Well, all right. Uh-huh. Thank you, Jill. Good Thank night. Thank you. Night. All righty, everyone. That is going to wrap up the episode. Thank you all for listening. I hope that you enjoyed and, I don't know, maybe learned something. Uh, I definitely have a few takeaways from it. Um, you know, listening to it, some of it, if I'm completely honest, from my skeptic's seat, some of it I was like, "Mm, I don't know about all that, but that's fine. And, you know, Shelly even said at the beginning of the episode, she was like, if you don't believe, that's okay, it doesn't bother me. And, um, so I, I don't know, I just feel like, like some of it, I really, it resonated with me and it sounded, a cat's, Jesus. Calm down. What if I, what if I pick you up and then you can't run anymore for a second? Um, <laughs> um, anyway, so a lot of it sounded like, yeah, okay, that that seems possible. That makes sense. And then other pieces, I was like, mm, I don't know. So let me know what you guys think because I want to hear your thoughts. And if you caught something that I didn't or whatever, I have actually 
I'm not recording this piece <laughs> was the, the same day that I recorded the episode with Shelly. So I am doing it very early Tuesday morning because I was very tired and I had to do laundry and there was a whole thing. But uh, so I had to re-listen to it all again last night. And um, you might notice this episode sounds a little more edited, but there were a lot of long pauses and ums on both sides so I just wanted to clean it up a little bit and it took forever because this episode is very long so um, I hope that you guys enjoy and appreciate my effort (laughs) and I don't know I hope it you know if even if you aren't into animal communication it was at least fun and entertaining to listen to and if you are you know where to contact Shelly we said it so many times throughout the episode but if you would like to contact me or find me you can email me at equitheory podcast uh actually just kidding my email is equitheory at gmail.com but you can do that. But if you have a question that you'd like answered on the podcast or a question about training your horses, please join our Patreon because that is where I will be able to answer you. And also you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, um, at Equitheory. Also, you can listen to the podcast on YouTube and you can follow me and the ponies at Jet Equitheory on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And that is going to make us all the way done. (laughs) Okay, so I will catch you guys next Tuesday for the last episode that we'll be doing in 2020. Have a happy holiday season, everyone. I hope that you're all well and staying healthy and, um, you know, you're enjoying your holidays with your family or your cats or what have you. I'll be having (laughs) Christmas Eve with my family and I'll be spending Christmas Day with my cats, so, and probably the ponies. Um, But, TBH, that's kind of how I prefer it anyway, so that's fine. <laughs> but I hope that you guys, uh, you know, just stay healthy and safe. And, you know, sometimes the holidays are really good parts of the year, and sometimes they're the roughest. So I hope that no matter what situation you're in, you are able to just take a couple deep breaths and, you know, I don't know, <laughs> remember sounds like the wrong word, but for lack of a better word, remember, know, feel how worth it you are, and that no matter what is happening, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, and things get better. So I, I hope that the holiday season isn't too rough, because I know this year is making everything odd. So without further ado, without further ado, Chair, do you have anything to say? That was very insightful. I should have just saved what I was going to say and just let the chair do it. (laughs) Anyway, thank you guys. Sorry, I had to burp. I've ruined this outro. (laughs) Have a happy holiday season, everyone, and take care of yourselves. I will catch you guys next Tuesday. Bye!